thank you so much for the honour of being invited here. I bring these toys to represent my children who also don't know their paternal or their grandfather's background, ethnicity, medical history, aunties, uncles, cousins, entire sections of my family and their family were sold. So what I thought about and learned from my experience of being donor conceived, and believe me, I thought about it a lot, is that I believe in truth, not deception on our birth certificates. I believe in the importance of knowing your ethnicity and your culture. The importance of having your full and updated medical history of where possible being raised by and with your genetic family, of not being created, destroyed or given away at the hands of an industry. I don't want my children to be targeted for their gametes. This social experiment, in particular, anonymous donor conception, has taken place for over a hundred years. Around the world, donor offspring have, at great expense to themselves, stood up and spoken out. It's simply not true that this has been taking place around the world and everything's fine. You're right, Malta. You're right to make a stand. While I'm not claiming that all of us have the same opinions, one thing seems to be very clear amongst us, and that's that anonymous donation is so wrong. I wanted to say to Parliament, where is the empathy for us? But I see it's here. But this legislation is woefully ignorant and cruel of all those people around the world at great expense to themselves, including myself, a seven-year High Court test case that I won in England against anonymous donor conception. It's being ignored. Alison Davenport, who was conceived at the clinic where I was conceived, was desperate to find somebody from her donated family to have bone marrow transplant to save her life. She went public in England and she died. One of my best friends, Narelle Guiche, who's Maltese, she died. She spent 15 years campaigning with me to find out who her genetic father is and her family. And she didn't know she was predisposed to this particular bowel cancer. So when they eventually realized, without her medical history, this is what it was. It was too late. It was stage four. I spoke to her when she was ill. I was trying to give her ideas of videos she could watch, because she was too ill to go out. And in Melbourne, in Australia, people saw her plight, and they changed the law. You have a beautiful woman from Malta, called Norel Guiche, and there's a law called Norel's Law in her honour. Be proud of her. So many donor offspring who are in this anonymous situation don't have their loss recognised. It's a powerful industry. There's strong opposition. We're subdued. We don't want to embarrass or ashamed our parents. But yet, we're speaking out. Because we know we're hurt. We know that knowing our medical history, knowing whether you're related to somebody you pass in the street, matters. Being able to look your genetic parent in the eye matters. And actually having your own genetic parents, being able to look each other in the eyes, matters. I 
I was created, my mum was a nurse. The dad that raised me was a doctor. The gynecologist was a doctor. And I'm sure the guy who donated was a medical student. Every single one of them knew about the importance of medical history. But they turned a blind eye. It's called blind empathy. But we need to not be blind for the interests of the future generations. Don't allow the industry and the industry users to define the best interest of the child. Because there's been a hundred years of them doing that and they have failed. Nural Gish died. Alison Davenport died. That was preventable. Narelle Gish was my friend. I loved her and she loved me. She loved the family that raised her and she loved and missed her donated family. In the last six years of her life, she was able to meet, meet her genetic father. If Molten X anonymous donor conception has let her down tragically, it has let us all down. It has created a buyer's market that pits one generation against the next. Humans and human reproduction is meant to be so much more dignified than this. So that future generations not only survive, but we thrive. Thank you for your support. of a lot of people who are affected and hurt by anonymous donor conception around the world to see you all here. I'm, I'm here to say Dr. Mark Sands and to the Social Affairs Committee that I saw here in Parliament, I'm not the only one. If you did your research, there's people that have done court cases, they've done PhDs, they've engaged with research, they've engaged with the media, they've created support groups, they've done everything they can to raise their publicity and public awareness. But where do we go? Where do people who are hurt by the reproductive industry go to say, stop, that was wrong. So the assumption is, is everything's fine and we kept quiet. But Norel wasn't quiet about it and nor am I. Thank you for your support.